Adam Sandler you know that walks rivalry? so Timothy Chalamet could run. Brunch! Hit it, boys! <laughs> Did it. Saw past lives. You got to do it, Pete. I'm recommending it to you. <laughs> it's a big recommend. Uh, what, what, what's like the timer on, on the first recommendation till now? Because it feels like it's been months. Yeah, it, I mean, it's probably like almost two weeks. Maybe that's still like a long time for a got to see this movie. It's got to be like a minimum two weeks. But that is a long time when I gave you like the hey, hard recommend. This is going to be something that we talk about quite a bit uh, in a few months, most likely. And you, you sat on it and you watched what? a bunch of shitty movies. No, so I was going to say, you want to know the sad thing? I haven't had two hours. I've had like one hour. And actually, there actually has been times where I've had where I've like watched the new Shane Gill special twice in a row. But uh, <laughs> by and large, it's just been a... I don't want to watch this movie in chunks. I want to watch it in the full. And I tried to watch it last night after I had gone to see a movie I've seen a hundred times in Stop Making Sense. Yeah, but that was an experience. That was an experience. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I started to watch it after the Monday Night Football game, which was famously uneventful. And (laughs) I've just been big fried. And I was like, I got two hours in me. I got two hours in me, and I don't even remember the movie starting. I fell asleep so quickly. Really? Yeah. Oh, you mean last night? Yeah. So not not like this time, right? Right. This was okay. Great. I mean, you. I can confirm that you have watched the movie and you've seen it all the way through. Mm-hmm. That good is... job. <laughs> Confirmed it. There okay, was, that, cool. That's a, that's Big like scoop. our our clap back at uh, Lights Camera Podcast. When they joke, when they said like, "What did you not see blockers?" and then our whole retort was, "Yes, we yes, did," we but there was no proof in the <laughs> the rap that we just saw. described general movie going. We were just experience. like, uh, "Yeah, we did." Fucking bought tickets, candy. There were seats, popcorn. Yeah, loser. Nice try. Uh, great, great, great picture. One I wish I saw. In theaters, I'm glad I, I own it for the low, low price of $19.99. You said I'd feel good mm-hmm. about that. I was touching my chest a lot, but I wish that I was doing that in the theater. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't know how much it would have changed it for me because I, I, I just like – that's the kind of movie that, that it feels kind of like a comfort movie and watching it in like the comfort of your own home mm-hmm. sort of enhanced it for me even the first time. Uh, I did watch for a second time. I'll ride along with you, not together in the same room, but as you mentioned, you, the only way that you can watch this movie right now is if you buy it for 20 bucks. I did that when I, I took a real shot, took a real chance on it, been like, I heard good things about this movie. Let's see if it's worth $20. Oh boy, is it worth $20. This movie is a fucking masterpiece. It's excellent. And uh, you want me to go old uh, Dave Wikipedia on you? Blow your mind? I don't know. Did you get to the Wikipedia of this movie? I did actually. I I, I uh, went to it this this uh, this time. So like, while watching it, are you gonna say that it's a uh, Celine Song's di- directorial debut? No, that's everyone knows that. Okay, uh, good, good. It, they should know that because it's an incredible movie for a directorial debut. Do you know that uh, the guy who plays Hai Song was a uh, replacement? No way, I did not know that. For Ooh, the kid cool. from Parasite. Really? And wow. I gotta say, uh what's his uh Tay uh Tao Yu? Um apologies if I'm butchering that name. Killed it. I yeah, do I know mean, for a fact is... kid from Parasite would have killed it too. <laughs> yeah, but I'm kind of glad that I, I had not seen either of these two leads in anything else before. Mm-hmm. Because you can kind of just like a- attach these characters to them for this experience, and uh, like my favorite thing about this movie is that it just seems like it- it- it's both all of the characters, I guess, but especially the two main characters are just like incredibly authentic, real people, and so like ha- seeing them for the first time as these characters kind of enhances that a little bit. 
500 days of summer narrator voice guy. Uh, this is a story about love, but it is it not sure a love is. story. That's right. One of those movies. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I loved it. It's like it, there's a lot of relatable moments and there's a lot of moments where you think it's really cool that uh, everybody's different. <laughs> you know, yeah. there are moments where I'm like, oh, I've been that person before. And there are moments where I'm like, man, that I, that just no, what, what I couldn't do that. But I love like I it's 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 kind of a love triangle movie. I loved all three of these characters. Uh, you said that you didn't recognize either of the two leads. I didn't either. Shout out though, the stupid kid from The Big Short. That's right, John yeah. McGarrow. That guy rocks. He was also in uh, I think First Cow. I believe so. I was uh, peeping his. Uh, his imdb page that guy rocks i wrote down as part of my notes for this is that like that guy should be a star like I, he's not in a lot of stuff everything that he's in i'm like damn kind of killed that and he's played much different characters in basically everything i've seen him in he's good to play the the husband of somebody who you're rooting for to be with somebody else the yes. sad guy that's <laughs> like Hey, you know, maybe you'll be happier if she cheats on you too. Just we're all pull. We we, we ship her somewhere else, buddy. Big uh, big cuck energy from that guy in this movie. He uh, would have murdered but... uh, the role of Matt in a teacher. Yes, yeah. And they kind of gave him that look too. <laughs> they sure did. Um, but yeah, for like for as as like. I don't I don't know what the right word to describe him is, but like he's kind of not a pushover, but kind of just like allows things to happen to him uh, in in this in this sort of way. Like uh, he's a he's like a guy that you still kind of want to root for. Oh, yeah. Even yeah. He kind of like because he has his insecurities and he has um, like some annoying tendencies, but He's also just like a sweetheart. And, and he's also in a tough spot. Like there is there is right. scene there's a scene in the bathroom between he and his wife where I'm like both of these people make complete sense. Like it's cool that she's mm -hmm. being honest with him. It's cool that he's like uh I don't feel good about this. It just it's And a that's like a movie. realistic depiction of a of a relationship. Like it it does so well with just like presenting authentic people in authentic situations and really kind of like not being fucking like in your face about it. There's a lot of like subtlety to this movie and it's, it's, it's very easy to appreciate. Great. Script. Even like that scene Great where, dialogue. where, where Hey sung like wakes up hung over. You can just like feel that hangover by how it's silently acted. Yeah. Uh, what percentage of our listeners would you say have seen or even heard of past lives? Uh, I think it would, it's probably higher than than you would think because I think that I was going to go under ten, under ten percent, or under ten people. Under ten percent. Um. So way under ten people. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. I, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I know uh, a few people that listen to the podcast have talked to me about it. And, um, and I mean, pretty much everybody that I've talked to, which unfortunately is not as big of a number as I want, but everybody I've talked to loves this movie. Yeah. The only people I've heard talk about this movie are people who have seen it and think it's the greatest movie in the world or yeah. like, it, like a the only people that have seen this year. movie are, mo are movie people. Yeah. Like I, that I guess that's that, that kind of bums at. me out a little bit. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Cause I like heard myself in this conversation being like, ah, I'm, do the listeners even know what we're talking about? And if they don't know what we're talking about, like that's a, that'd be a great thing to correct because really it is like, this is going to go down. I would say is like a top five movie this past year. Oh, I, I would say it, for, for this current me right year. now, it's like top two. <laughs> like it's, it's certainly going to be one of my favorite movies. Like by the time we get to Oscars, even with like the big releases that are coming out, I can definitely see myself like, pumping this this movie's tires for like oscar stuff is something else um, big coming out i feel like there's something else big that's coming out soon there's a david fincher movie coming out uh, uh the killer yeah there is uh the L richard Linklater movie which mm -hmm. i believe is this hits Hit streaming Man. by the way next week 
folks. Yeah, I was going to say, like, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen this movie don't and you're spend not – bucks. And you're not really a movie person, like you don't have to feel bad about not seeing it because it's pretty hard to find or watch unless you are willing to seek it out and pay twenty dollars. Like it's an A twenty four movie, um, but right, it's A twenty four. Yep. Yeah, and uh, so like that's why I was willing to to seek it out and pay twenty dollars for it because I was like, there's a ninety five percent chance that. I'm going to love this movie because it's a 24 and everybody's talking about how much they love it. So, uh, yeah, streaming next week, uh, HBO max. Am I wrong? Uh, it might just be available for rent. I don't know. Oh, really? Okay. I could be wrong. Well, regardless of where it's streaming and or renting, you should search out this movie and watch the hell out of it. Uh, we got a, we got a Jersey update. You told me on Sunday that, uh, fanatics was running a, promotion where if you bet fifty dollars in their sports book you could get a football jersey sounds like a good deal to me i don't know how much football jerseys cost haven't bought one in three million years but i really want a cameron dicker chargers jersey so i did this deal you did the deal they let you get a jersey i was sitting around today i'm like yo I haven't seen anything about this jersey. You were like, just got your my jersey. I was fighting with fanatics all day. They weren't going to give me my jersey. And I bet, I wanted to be like, yo, you think that I intentionally bet $50 on the Chargers to win a fucking football game if I didn't, if like there wasn't some other shoe I was expecting to drop? <laughs> it was funny. You were like, hey, I, I put my bet on the Chargers. You're like, uh, uh, I think they could lose, but I just decided to put it on. I was like, yeah, of course they could fucking lose. They're the Chargers. Like that was the worst fucking game I've seen in my life. I texted Giles like uh, halfway through the second quarter, and I was like, "Chargers are fucking awesome this season. They're scoring a bunch of points, giving up a bajillion yards, but they're still winning. Let's go, baby!" And then like J.C. Jackson, who's just a very it's a very sad situation there. He got like a mercy interception, and I was like, "All right, we're back." And then they just got fucking cooked the rest of the way and lost the goddamn fucking Dolphins. And the Patriots are playing the Dolphins this week. And Patriots friends are like, hey, so tell me about the Dolphins. You, they just played your boys. What do you think? I'm like, how the fuck should I know? It was, it was against the fucking it's, Chargers. Yeah, that's like that's like asking a college football fan to like evaluate their team after week zero. It's like that that game was literally put on the schedule so that we could kick the shit out of them Stupid, and feel better dumb about ourselves. Bullshit assholes they were playing against. <laughs> God. As I'm wearing oh, my, uh, my lovely Chargers hat. But yeah, yeah Chaboy got a, uh, a Navy number 11 Dicker jersey on the way. Very excited. I uh, I got a number five Bijan Robinson Texas jersey. I was going to get a Bijan Falcons jersey, but the Falcons jerseys aren't just aren't cool enough. Like if they had like like their only cool uniforms are the ones that uh they pair with the red helmets, but that's just like a straight up black jersey. Like, I really wanted you to get a Bijan Falcons, Falcons jersey. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, that's way more your move because like <laughs> it is it's bad <laughs> yeah but like we talked about over the weekend one of my favorite things to do with you is be like one of us has, has got to get this yeah you know but but i think that we've we've done a lot of um like delegating or is, i don't know if that's the right no, it's a, yeah, like term a, here right like splitting like, up how... we we've been a, we've been doing a lot of like hey i love this thing but i think it's more more you so like you have this one. Yeah, but there, there's a – you've got a couple of things that are maybe – I don't I don't even know what my fashion sense is anymore. I used to yes. have one when I was – like in my early 20s, it was 60s like everything else, like everybody else's was. And that just as I've gotten older, everything has just been kind of like 70s-ish. But you'll have something that will look like it's a little – set, like that Texas jersey uh, t-shirt you were wearing the other day. Like – That'd yeah. be something that like I'd be jumping up and down for, but it looks fucking. It look. I guarantee you, if I owned it, it would look worse on me. Yeah, I'm not saying that there's like no overlap there, but I I, I do think that our like styles are are moving further and further apart, and like they're they're kind of like identifiable with each one of us, mm. and I think that's a good thing because there are times when I see shit, and I'm like, oh, like I really like this, but I bet this would 
probably look better or like fit more with Deej. So like I'll send it to you and be like, hey, this rocks. Love that. And you uh, do the same thing with me. Back when I was uh, more, what's the word, uh, employed, <laughs> I, uh, I'd for sure just like pick something up if it was going to work for somebody. And like that's, that's a like cool move my mom would do when I mean, I was her child. So that made sense. But she'd be like, hey, saw this and thought of you. And I don't know where that went, but I feel like people don't do that anymore. Uh, maybe a bad time to share the story. But uh, you you gave me a revolution jersey for my birthday this year. Mm -hmm. I say it's a bad time to oh. share that story because the revolution are absolute disaster, absolute disaster right no, they now. Aren't. They're <laughs> Stop. Continue. <laughs> Talk about stuff. So See, I gave you a revolution You're, jersey. Yes, yeah, so you gave me a revolution jersey. Uh, and <laughs> I I was like very excited about that because I never would have gotten one myself, but like I really like the jersey. And then I like put it in my closet um and I and I like didn't wear it for a month, month and a half, forgot that I even owned it because I would like never buy that for myself. And then I went on vacation like a, like two or three weeks ago. And I went in my closet and I was like, oh, fuck, like I have this and I like this and I broke it out and I wore it on vacation and people were like, yo, that jersey's awesome. And I was like, I know, isn't it? And it felt like nice to like be surprised when I opened my closet and found like this hidden thing that happened. So with, that, uh, that is a cool move to buy something for somebody that they may not buy for themselves, but like they actually do really like it. You gave me a hand me up Barry Larkin jersey and I experienced mm -hmm. the same sort of thing with that last summer. I'd probably had it for about a year, maybe even more than that, since you'd given it to me. But I just never thought about it. It was in my closet. And uh, yeah, it was I, I kind of was in a it's a cool feel all that fits me mode. And I yeah. like had sized into that. And it was great. I rocked it like every day that summer. Hell yeah. <laughs> really, really good. Um, so yeah, uh, p the listeners out there, buy, uh, buy your friends some clothes and maybe they'll forget about it. Until mm. they don't. I will and say it'll be a nice little treat for them. Both of the Revs kits right now are excellent. Their white one is really good. I saw somebody at Idle Hands. That'll be a nice segue because I'm sure we'll recap that. I saw somebody at Idle Hands Oktoberfest wearing the white Revs kit. Number nine, Giacomo Vrioni. I went right over to him, started chatting about Giacomo and... Hey, man, once he gets his confidence, and I think that he's getting a little more run right now, a lot of Giacomo takes. I don't know how interested this person was in having a conversation with a stranger about Giacomo Vrioni. So I wrapped it up relatively quickly, but still, I saw a very nice kit in the wild. That's awesome. Uh, my one complaint about the Revs jersey is that every time I wear it, I have to deal with Ellen seeing me and going, oh, cool United Healthcare jersey. <laughs> Oh, uh, I remember my first up. soccer. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it's why that's why it's so annoying. I'm just like, sh shut up. I wish I still had. Um, I wish I still had my Hyundai. I would have rocked my Chelsea kit around Ellen, right, right in her face. She'd be like, "Oh, big Hyundai fan." I'd be like, "Oh yeah, this thing's gonna last forever." <laughs> and then it then didn't. it fucking died. Only reason I you bought know. that fucking thing, they were like, "Oh." It's not like the worst car and it's going to last forever and it's pretty reasonably oh, no. priced. From from like my experience and things that I've heard like Hyundai's are are uh, are good cars until they aren't. Like they won't they won't like run you into a lot of trouble like in terms of maintenance, but then they'll just fucking die. That's right. So that that was the, they were like it's going to be really cheap and easy to fix and then every fucking 2 hours it had an issue with its lights. And I'm like, yo, you can't have fucking issues. Like, have a like, sack up with your issues. Don't be light, okay? <laughs> if you want, like, if you're fucking, I don't know what's supposed to go wrong with the car, but, like, if your fucking, like, muffler is busted or your muffler is fucking guzzling your fucking filters, then, hey, look, I'm a car guy. I get it. I'm going to take it to the mechanic and all that. But having to go in every four hours being like, uh, do you, I, I went on AutoZone.com and looked up the matching parts. Do you have the, the, uh, the Sylvania bulb that is blah, 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 blah. It sucks. <laughs> so I didn't like that about having a Hyundai. 
Uh, okay. That's that's uh, car ta- uh, <clears throat> car talk. Yeah. That's chop shop with no P&D. not chop shop although i felt like i was running a chop shop the way i was always taking the lights out of my car disassembling I mean, it, the it, thing it doesn't necessarily mean that we're we're in a chop shop it just could be the name of our our car podcast people forget chop shop people forget that uh billy riggins ran a chop shop that's right <laughs> that guy was up to some crazy <laughs> shit in high school that's the uh Second craziest storyline in Friday Night Lights, other than uh, Landry murders someone <laughs> to get some tail. That was crazy. And then hits another girl to get some tail. Doesn't doesn't Saracen get a gun at some point too? Uh does Saracen get a gun? I don't know. I can't remember if guns Saracen. are ever involved in Friday Night Lights, which would be a surprise if they aren't, because yeah, it's Texas. Location. I'm pretty sure that Saracen buys a gun at some point. I think it's I think it's like after he graduates high school. <laughs> He's like, Coach, I just want to marry Julie. And he shoots. And Coach then Taylor. he's like lifts up his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Shows he's got what you also, think. How about now? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Idle Hands was uh, fun. It was a million degrees during the day. It was super packed. Second biggest turnout in the history of that event. Poured like crazy for like 40 minutes. Uh, I mean at least it felt like it was pouring forever and then it like it stopped for a little bit and then it picked up and rained forever again um and it was raining hard this was not like it a, rained hey, forever can... a, a second time yeah like it it took a it took like a 10 minute break and then oh, it started oh again. So i'm counting that as the yeah oh the, yeah, the yeah big okay shebang uh and this was not like a yeah whatever it's raining we'll we'll tough it out this was like get the fuck out of there it's raining through the tent it was batting down the hatches have you ever battened anything else? I don't believe that I have have done that. I'll tell you what. What else would you batten down? I'm not the biggest wordsmith. I would say I'm like an average wordsmith. I don't feel I know what the word batten means. And I don't think I've ever heard it used in any other Whoa. context. Other you ready for bat- this? Battening down the hatches. It's both a noun and a verb. Okay. So what's a batten as a noun? A long, flat strip of squared wood or metal used to hold something in place as a fastening against a wall. So I guess that's so. So it's maybe like screw and screw. How like you screw a yeah. screw sort of thing. Uh, but okay. the verb is to strengthen or fasten with battens. For example, oh, okay. Stephen so like was the, ha- the hatches need the- battens, and you need to batten down the hatches. The more you know. Uh, yeah, it was tough. And I had gone and set up early that day, all of my stuff and sound checked my big secret fucking project and was like, all right, everything's set up now when it's time for me to go on. I even had my own area. So the people that were playing music, they were in another yeah, tent polka band. next to me, the polka band. They were great guys. They did a great job. Their set really got kind of blown up by that. Uh, that it ring. did. Um, it did. But those guys kind of rocked. They were just like some older dudes playing some polka music. They were pros. Yeah, it was pretty great. Uh, I survived the dunk tank once again. Yeah, you had proud the, of me. You had the the longest dunk tank, and I joked that you were going to hire crisis actors to uh, to boost your numbers, but you ended up not needing to. And it ended up being neither situation. It wasn't that, and I don't say this to uh, besmirch you or to discredit you. It wasn't that there was like a, hey, you hear Pete's in the dunk tank? And it wasn't that you hired oh, no. uh, crisis actors. It was that Nalco was there and yes. her son's little league team was there, correct? Uh, I don't know if that was like the, his little league team or something, but like I was. You got a bunch of kids. Saying, I kept saying, like, what is this, the little, those little league all stars? Because a gang of of young young teens, are they teenagers? No, they're probably younger than teenagers. They were like eight, nine, something like that. Uh, they teenagers. all congregated to the dunk tank and just like absolutely pummeled me. And 
I had to sit there and take it for like 40 minutes straight as they just fucking wound up and, and did some irreversible trauma to me in that dunk tank. I was, st- I mean, it's good because it raised money. I hope uh, I was stunned though. Cause I knew that you'd gone in the dunk tank. Uh, I had had to move or I made the choice when it was pouring to run my stuff inside because I did see that water was seeping through and I had like my life under that tent. I had yeah. like, three guitars, a piano, a synth, uh, a sample pad that I just got lot like a, a, a little PA, like so many things that I just didn't want destroyed. So uh, I unplugged everything. My amp brought it all inside. And when the rain stopped, you got in the dunk tank. And I was like, okay, I'll bring everything back out, plug it back in. It won't really be able to sound check anything because now there's humans standing around. I don't want to give away what I'm doing. Uh, But I was like, okay, I think I got everything set up now. And my friends were getting antsy because they'd been there for a while. They'd been uh, having some. And they were like, oh, yeah, all right, well, when are you getting out there? And I was like, all right, 10 minute warning. Get your final drinks. It's going to be a party. Let's go. And then I peeked my head around and I saw you were still in the dunk tank. And I was like, oh, uh, make it 15. Pete's still in the dunk tank. Let him dry off uh, and let him get a drink or whatever he needs. I don't want to rush him. And then like 10 minutes later, I look back and you're still in the dunk tank. And I'm like, all right, he's been in the dunk tank for at least 16 minutes now. What the hell's going and on? I, I kept seeing you do like these laps and being like, you're still in here. No, then and I started yelling at you like. A yeah, I know. Parent. And you're like, Go the f- if I come back here again and you're still in there, you're in big trouble, mister. And the first like, one was a joke. You- the second one was like, out, get. Well, I didn't. I didn't. Out. <laughs> I didn't know that you were waiting for me to start your music uh set so like yeah because... i had no idea why the fuck you were like get out of the tank all right and i'm so realizing this was... now because i was supposed to play like two hours after you were in the dunk tank right normally you were supposed to be in at uh, five or no i was, supposed I was to be supposed... in at five and you were supposed to be at playing at six all right so you were we were both anticipating there wasn't going to be an issue with uh having yeah. to wait but but when the once the rain resumed i think they were like all right Pete, can you go in? All right. Uh, poker guys, are you guys done? Okay, whatever. DJ, start whenever you want. So it all just yeah. kind of got uh, mashed together. Yeah, but- they, they just like threw the schedule out as soon as the rain delayed everything for like 90 minutes. Um, but yeah, like I got out and I like I heard what the plan was and I was like, oh, okay. That that makes sense why he was running back and forth being like, why are you still in here? Uh, and I'm glad that you waited because... Uh, the experience of seeing seeing you like start doing your set and then me immediately that's my favorite part oh, i yes. immediately figured it out like i technically figured it out before i joked about it happening before you even started but the second you started playing the first song i turned to uh i forget who i turned to and i was like chris rich he's just going to play all taylor swift <laughs> and, and Okay, so yeah. apparently I didn't know that I that like other people had been clued in. I was completely in the dark. Okay, so very few people had been uh, clued in. I think that there was only one person there who Rich and Nicole Yang told me that they both knew that that uh, Rich that you knew were doing this. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think I, don't think Rich I think knew. you I think you accidentally spilled the beans to Rich uh, earlier in the day. I don't. think no i didn't i didn't because the uh because uh everybody's wives and partners were saying that uh they were gonna head out let the boys stay have a nice time and in some of those pairings the people that were staying were the bigger swifties which is fine but in some of those pairings the people who were leaving were the bigger swifties so i was like (laughs) like uh (laughs) Like Chris's wife is a huge Swifty. I don't think Chris really cares too much about uh, Taylor. So she was like, joke. She was like, oh, I'll have to catch the live stream. And I was like, oh, (laughs) you joke now. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what, even if you weren't a big Swifty, I'll tell you who had a good time. Literally everybody, (laughs) because everybody, the vibes were so good. Okay. Everybody, everybody, once they started figuring out what was going on, 
it was very fucking fun and very funny all right i appreciate that i do want to get to though how you figure it out or the best moment of that day for me like really when i got i guess there, we should before we even yeah. do that we should describe what what happened okay so i i uh, did a cover of the eras tour and i um you preceded it and hyped it up by saying it was like the most ridiculous thing you've my ever biggest done. shit post it was your biggest shit post <laughs> and it's like some real bs and so like i was expecting just like nonsense nonsense <laughs> something involving feathers or something yeah like <laughs> magic tricks music in a different language because no one's ever done that before like for you like oh, yeah, uh, a language that you don't know yeah that actually that that, that i wouldn't be shocked if i did something like that um but uh it was pouring during the day and i was kind of like baiting the 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 fellas i was like hey whatever rain show and then jones was like taylor can do it deej can do it and again it, this none of you guys knew what the plan was and then you said something to the you said it would be really funny if you just did the errors tour and yes. i was so happy i was like but but i said back to you i was like oh yeah as if we're like <laughs> over my dead body and i was like oh i'm so excited to to do this and uh, then uh so you opened up your set by playing what song again miss americana and the heartbreak prince miss americana and the heartbreak prince uh you started playing that as soon as you started like f four notes into it i turned around and i forget who i said it to i want to say it was rich or something but i was like he's just gonna play all taylor swift <laughs> and because i knew i just knew your brain and i knew <laughs> that if you started with a taylor swift song it was and like it was like some bs or some bullshit mm -hmm. it was gonna be all taylor swift <laughs> yeah so that's what i knew immediately yeah uh it it stinks when you threaten to run things into the ground as much as uh as much as uh i have with certain stupid things i've done so if there's ever like a thing that could be run into the ground and i start to do it the joke's already ruined it's like okay well he's probably going to run this into the ground i was excited though because uh your version of miss americana and the heartbreak prince was really good and i was like i was like okay uh this is interesting. Like, I wonder if he's going to like kind of take this seriously and have like really good, uh, like I, I don't want to say like heartfelt, but like gourmet, genuine, earnest, earnest uh, renditions of of these Taylor Swift songs. And then we got deeper they were all into pretty the face. set. <laughs> we got deeper into the set, and there was some real bullshit in there. <laughs> um, so. I tried to do all of them like I, I wasn't trying to mock any of them if they if there were any I, I was I guess I was just like mocking the thing but I don't but I wasn't I really wasn't trying to like I, I don't I don't think I made too many comments during the songs about how no bad the lyrics were or whatever no, but like you would change like a word here and there to like make it more you oh or yeah. like you would include like Tim Heidecker drops I had a lot the of their, songs. The songs had a lot of drops <laughs> so like drop. that that's like the real bullshit that i'm referring to like it it, it wasn't like mocking the songs or be, like being disrespectful to taylor swift i wouldn't say like there were swifty swifties there that were like this is awesome if you were mocking the music and like clearly like, clearly like being an asshole they wouldn't have had as good a time as they did i did say before all too well uh all right get comfortable <laughs> so uh rich was saying yeah rich did know because he said that you told him uh you'll know when it's over oh like, no okay you'll... so so th that that's all uh jones said during the day he was like uh uh you got anything big planned for your encore tonight you know how guys talk and uh yeah. <laughs> i was like no encore and he was like no encore you're not gonna have an encore for your set and i said you'll know when this is over <laughs> which famously i mean famous last words because uh i'm gonna put out something uh documenting this whole uh process 
It will not include, though, the end of the show, which was I closed with you karma. Explaining, you explaining that it was the end of the show. I closed with karma. And then I was like, oh, done. And like started <laughs> to like unplug stuff. And people, but, but it just felt it sat. I, I, I don't know how else I could have handled it. But I just so gave off the I'm I'm asking you to ask for more, but I really wasn't. And people were like, "Come on, warm, you gotta have play Vineyard Nights, play Baseball Manager." And I was like, "She doesn't do that. She closes with Karma. <laughs> Done. Bye." And then I ended up getting in like a light argument with the audience, and then was like, "Seriously, <laughs> turn around." That is like that is a very you way to end a set though. Is <laughs> to be like, "No, I'm telling you, this is it. Like." <laughs> It's over. Go home now. It's no, the ending of Ferris Bueller. Just, just turn around. There was other. There like, was why so are you still here? That, there were so many people it's there over. that weren't there for the music. That were sitting down at tables, probably hating every fucking second of it. It's like go to the fucking tables. Go tell them you but, survived. Um, but when when uh, when our pal Rich said like, "Oh, he told me you'll know when it's over." I as soon as you started all too well, I was like, "Oh man, he hates this song," but he might do like a 47 minute version of it. And then I would be like, okay, everybody's begging for this to end by the end of it. I thought about that. I did. I, uh, I almost cut all too well, but it wouldn't have been a, uh, faithful. It would have been, uh, it would have been cheap if I cut all. Well, too maybe, well. maybe you accomplished the feat of, um, highlighting that that song is not as special as a lot of people make it out to be <laughs> it does it does suck though i didn't realize this until very late in the set um in unplugging everything in running back and then plugging everything back in and then like figuring out a mix on the fly i didn't realize till very very late in the set that uh my acoustic guitar was way too loud and uh i don't have any video of all too well but i was told that uh, all too well was the song on which that was most apparent that the acoustic guitar was really loud. But other than that, like, I'll tell you what, I liked playing a lot of those songs. Like I really enjoyed playing lover. Um, I liked that. I am not going to name names, but one of my friends was singing along very loudly to all of the songs. Uh, I, I was happy with the group of people I knew who came I was happy that whichever people didn't like weren't there for that. Some people kind of got in on it. Uh, in watching some of the videos back, I w I I'd planned on uh, recording it on my camera, but honestly, I just didn't have enough plugs up there, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna start playing." So I didn't. So I just said, "Anybody who has videos, send them to me, and I can use them for this thing I'm making." and there were for sure songs, especially like I lost my voice like three songs into it because I didn't rehearse any of these songs. I just like frantically spent like 10 days or whatever making backing tracks for these songs and being like, this will work. This will work. This will work. Uh, most of it worked. Mo like most of it, like most of it worked. And watching it back, there were obviously moments where either my voice wasn't there or I clearly hadn't practiced it or i bit off a little too much that i could chew but like i am for sure my my own worst critic for like the horrible parts watching them back like i'm i'm laughing at them because like they, yeah, they were no, still like, super fun yes right that's like i don't i don't remember a single second of that entire set where anybody was like oh oh god well yeah like oh woof like didn't didn't nail that one it was it was just like you we're clearly and I having was bare -chested a shitload for a lot of the set. <laughs> you were having a shitload of fun and it was uh it was very apparent and it was very kind of like uh delivered to the to the crowd. Uh biggest regret or biggest thing I would change uh I had I made lead sheets for all the songs and there were moments for sure where even if I knew how to play the songs I was still too on book and like I had a music stand in front of me and I feel like that was a little uh, impersonal and not uh, a little closed off from the audience. So next, if I'll do that again, uh, if I ever do that again, uh, 
I'd either move the music stand or put it somewhere else. Uh, I for sure had the most fun on songs where I didn't play an instrument though. Like fuck it. Uh, like shake it off was really fun. Um, fucking, uh, I mean, what you should do, I feel like what you should do is like the next time you do it, you should like advertise it as Taylor Swift. Like, because then you'll get like a ton of people who are very excited for Taylor Swift. I sent a, it, it'll be different energy. Yeah. I, I forget what maybe video better, maybe worse. Uh, Chris sent me a bunch of videos and I was going through them and I forgot what song it was, but there was one that was such a fucking, just like, why the fuck was any of this done? And I sent it to Nicole and Nora and I was like, holy shit. This was really good. <laughs> like, <laughs> this was like, I didn't realize it. This was like really dead on. For it to work in that environment, like that setting is, is pretty impressive because I don't think that, that like, I mean, like Taylor Swift, obviously there's like a lot of Taylor Swift fans, but like people going to an Oktoberfest and like having been drinking all day oh yeah, and like in a parking lot to get that after like a day of kind of serious music and people who don't know you being like, what the fuck is this guy's deal? And why is he like performing the weirdest Taylor Swift songs? Like that could ease could have easily gone sideways and it didn't. It and I think that was like, it was just like the best time. It did in points. I don't like, know. It went sideways in like the way that you would want it to though. Like, did you, did you see the crowd though, was great? The crowd was great. Did you, however, see the couple with the dog? Uh, because they uh, turned on me big time, buddy. Did they? I didn't, so, I didn't see that. I start, I forget what song I was playing. Um, it was either cruel summer i think it was cruel summer which is the second song uh and they had a dog and they were dancing and they were so happy and i was like oh these people love taylor swift this rock so then, like i keep going by the way first half of the set i stuck to my plan of not interacting with the crowd at all uh unfortunately there was member one member of the crowd who made it so i had to interact with the, the yes. crowd but um you basically like there was one guy who just on like came into my stage tent yes. and was just like hanging Actually, out with me i don't know if this was also the person with the dog but there was somebody who came up to you in the middle of a song and like put in a request for me to stop. a song what for me to stop maybe she was, said, was that it? Was, it? <laughs> it was the person with the dog so the, early in the set she was dancing having a great time she was with her dog I was encouraging the dog to dance. The dog wasn't as into it. Uh, then, like late in the set, and they I'm sure they were drinking, having a good time. Uh, these were fine people. Uh, came up and was like, you can't keep doing this. And I was like, what? And she was like, you have to play other stuff. You can't, it can't just only be this. And she, it was like, Taylor Swift was Voldemort. She like wasn't saying Taylor Swift's name. She was like, you, you, you can't just be this. And then her partner was like, bro, come on. I got about some guns and roses. Come oh, on. yes, I do remember some that guns line. and roses. And I was like, look, I've got like 11 more Taylor Swift songs and <laughs> then you can listen to whatever you want. Uh, I did fake them out, though, on the surprise song, which was yes. That was like a, you had to know that was coming. <laughs> yeah, of course. I did. Yeah, a, that was a, you did a, like a, what was your line? You said like, you guys know this song. And and then you like did some fun facts about that song. No, I just said yeah. like, all right, like now, like part of the, it's the part of the set where there's a surprise song and people were like, anything else, Bruce, uh, the, uh, Johnny Cash, blah, blah. And I was like. You are right. I could play anything by any artist. And I did just see Bruce Springsteen a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Here's Mean. And then I played <laughs> Mean, which was, I'm so glad I added Mean to the set. That song rocks. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, we also I, we also met um, several brunch listeners yes. at, uh, at the, at the uh, Oktoberfest. And they were the best. Uh, they always are, but uh, saw... Um, Peter K. I I can't pronounce his last name. We met him. Uh, his can't friends. They were great. Huh? Can't or won't? Uh, I can't. <laughs> okay. 
but also I won't because because you can't. Yes. Uh, no, he was great. Um, guy Dealbreaker Jones. Uh, <laughs> Dealbreaker Jones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was uh, the group that talked to us at the end. They were great. Um, it was a big Tage Thompson fan that I met. Just like the best people, salt of the earth. That's right. The Tage Thompson fan was funny because they were like, uh, I forget. They were like, I'm a Tage Thompson fan, not because of Pete or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, it me was too. Like very aggressive. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm a Tage Thompson fan, but not because of I you. I too have other reasons to like Tage Thompson. <laughs> Uh, and they, that person was also a big Taylor Swift hater, but had a good time. Yeah. So they came up after the set and they were like, hey, so you hate Taylor Swift, right? And it was like, that's a great <laughs> reaction to that set. <laughs> <laughs> was it obvious? That was all done in anger, correct? <laughs> nah, man. Some of those songs. So the, I think that the biggest uh, development with all that is that I think uh, Last Great American Dynasty has become my favorite Taylor Swift song. That's a fucking great one, man. Yeah, you did precede that uh, that performance mm. of that song with like, hey, this is the best Taylor Swift song. And I was, and then a bunch of people were like, I don't even fucking know this one. I do like that song a lot. Mm. Um, but I definitely wouldn't say it's my favorite. It is funny to me, and I do like that, like, Folklore, the album that you mm -hmm. love to trash, contains your most favorite Taylor Swift song ever. I think it's a beautiful way of, uh, I think it's a beautiful thing. Uh, at some point, hopefully soon, I'll, I'm going to have a video of the making of all of that. And it was a mess, but it was a lot of fun. And it was a, uh, I don't know, it was a silly experiment, something that I'm uh, glad I did. It forced me to get some toys that I wanted to get, and I'll always take an excuse to get some uh, fun music toys. Uh, did you listen to the... We, go ahead. I did not. You didn't listen uh, to I the did new Olivia Rodrigo? I haven't listened to the new Olivia Rodrigo. Uh, One minute, bro. I know, I know. Well, you watch Andor, bitch. Um, it's too but long. But I, I did want to say, like, before we move on from Taylor Swift... We should talk about the fact that, uh, like, that reporter job is fucking opening up. Gansett and, like, USA Today mm -hmm. are hiring a reporter to exclusively cover Taylor Swift. And I'm considering applying for content. I do think that you should, uh, that you should do that. I think it would be very funny. But you'd have to be careful with it. You were right. You were saying like it, I'd, it would be like too much of an asshole move. I don't want to make fun like, of hiring managers, and like it's bad enough they have to work for Gansett, and like I don't, I just don't want to fuck with people who. It's it's, I can't dislike man on the street, or I can't be uncomfortable doing man on the street stuff, and then be like, but I'm comfortable just like showing up to someone's job and fucking with them. Uh, yeah. So like, I, I think there's a way that you can do it. Like you definitely don't want to fuck with them and you definitely don't want to like waste their time, but I genuinely want to know and want to find out like if you could get that job as you with your, so like your standpoint, like I wonder if they're trying to hire like a Taylor Swift fan to be the Taylor Swift reporter, or if they want somebody who is like fit for the job and can look at things kind of objectively. So I for sure am if I apply I would be the best candidate they had by 5 million miles. <laughs> like I'm probably going to be a better writer than whoever's applying. What if somebody who won like a Pulitzer fucking applied for that job? Then they're should then they're they shouldn't be hired because they're a fucking idiot if they're a Pulitzer prize <laughs> person who is trying to cover Taylor Swift. If I I'm disagree, trying to cover though, Taylor Swift I, as a bit, I, it's fine. I hate, I hate when employers say like you're too qualified, overqualified, for this job, or you're overqualified for this job. That is the stupidest thing, and maybe not the stupidest thing, but like the most disrespectful thing that you can say no, to somebody who is literally there applying for that job. If you're a Pulitzer Prize winner and you are applying for a thirty thousand dollar a year Taylor Swift beat job, which I'm sure that is what that is, 
then yeah. you are underqualified because you are so stupid that you don't know what to do with your Pulitzer Prize and you're choosing what if, to make What if that's their passion? What if like they they went to that job interview, they decided to respond to the application and uh, the listing with an application. They went to the job interview, they sat down in front of you. They, they clearly think that it's worth their time and they want that job. Then I think they so Who are you to tell them that they're that they're they're too qualified or even like in your case, underqualified because they're not putting their Pulitzer Prize. What if what if they made a bunch of money from their Pulitzer Prize and they accomplished all the things they wanted to, and now they just like really want to do this as like a passion project? Then I, I think they can go to that interview, but there are two places that honestly might even suit them better. I if I were them, I would go to a police station, a station or a hospital. Or a hospital. Yeah. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. What if this whole, what if this whole job isn't real and it's just like a way? To, it's just like a big like net to get pe- it's, to to like catch yeah, it's like to catch a like, predator. No, I was it's, gonna say like you, Finding Nemo, but uh, yeah, it's to catch a predator. You pose as you pose as uh, a a uh, a underage child to lure in the predators. This is you're posing as a Swifty looking for the most experienced Swifty, and then you arrest them when they show up. No, but so for real though, I can go to this thing and say, not only do I, I like Taylor Swift, have re-recorded Taylor Swift's music. How many other people can say they did that? Uh, I kid with that. That's just like a stupid shit (laughs) posty thing. At least three. But like seriously, like the the, like the even the things that I would write, the the shit that I would put on the brunch blog about Taylor Swift albums. And I don't say this to say that it's this brilliant stuff. It's to say that the other stuff that's out there with most music criticism is just batshit. Like those little fucking like paragraphed write-ups of each song fucking say more. And again, this is just like a fucking throwaway yeah, thing, but, but those say more than whatever gushing shit you're getting other places. Yeah. And I know, I know you tweeted this, but like you, you wouldn't be the most qualified Taylor Swift reporter. You'd be the most qualified Taylor Swift columnist. Yes, that's what I want. Like, yeah, yeah. Like you don't need to be a be able Taylor to rip Swift the team reporter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you, you. Uh, I, I understand why they would be hiring a Taylor Swift reporter, just because everything involving Taylor Swift does fucking numbers. It's LeBron, and yeah. so having it, yeah, so having a dedicated Taylor Swift reporter. Makes sense because you're always going to have somebody writing a Taylor Swift story anyway. So what may as well just give somebody that job. Uh, but it, that's kind of like the, my bigger issue here is because with this this story and the story of ASU doing the Taylor Swift uh, course, elective course, like neither one of them is being approached from the right angle in my mind. Like the Taylor Swift course in uh, – at ASU, I think is a psychology course. And it's about like the messages in her songs and like her experiences and shit like that. Like who gives a fuck? Like that's not special. That's not like exclusive to Taylor Swift. And that's not something that, that needs to be studied with like that scope. What really should be studied is Taylor Swift's like self-marketing strategy and like her business approach because she is, an incredible fucking businesswoman who is essentially like created her own fucking economy <laughs> and lives at like the center of her own world that should be studied. And then in this case, Taylor Swift, like I, I guess Taylor Swift probably like does need a beat reporter for the reasons that I mentioned earlier that she's just like a traffic fucking hog. But like Taylor Swift is like a cultural icon and obviously like one of the biggest fucking stars in the world right now have a columnist that just kind of like follows her and weighs in like basically what Nora does essentially with her podcast. Like Nora is essentially a Taylor Swift columnist. Nora is the Nora's like a Taylor Swift professor. Yeah. Yeah. Nora. I'd say this like once a brunch episode. Nora is the most important person on the planet because if if any other Taylor Swift fan had her job, if it weren't for Nora, we would all, all be the horses right would now. be escaped. Yes. All the horses exactly. would be running loose in the hospital exactly. to steal from a John Mulaney. Right. Hit. Nora's like, I fucking love Taylor Swift. Here's what's going on. And 
when she says here's what's going on she's actually saying what's going on and having a real conversation with people and thank fucking god if she wasn't already the greatest she's the greatest for that uh if any other person had that job though i would be so scared for our nation and our our planet because the taylor swift conversation obviously can get positively batshit and i'm already seeing a lot of it with even some of the reaction to olivia rodrigo's new record of like everything ties back to taylor swift and it's about taylor swift and i'm like yo you know what olivia rodrigo is doing right now working with different people and making better music than taylor swift so like let's let olivia rodrigo do her fucking thing and let dan nigro who i was texting with nora today is the anti nof you like that i do like he's that, the anti nof like yeah. let them do their fucking shit and enjoy it because i do like that when i listen to olivia rodrigo even if it sounds like a lot of other stuff and people will react to it being like, oh, this sounds like Paramore, or this sounds like Avril Lavigne or Courtney Barnett or the Yeah Yeahs. Yeah, it does sound like a lot of things you've heard before. Each of the songs are different from one another and they're real ass songs with like personalities and tricks and little moves and they don't feel like every verse and chorus are copied and pasted. So like, Olivia Rodrigo can be derivative, or I'd say Olivia Rodrigo and Dan Nigro for sure pull from artists of the past, which a lot of people do that and right. fair, whatever. They're derivative in that aspect. But a lot of other top 40 artists, and I definitely accuse Taylor Swift of doing this, will just make the same song a million different times. And I will, I would much rather someone do the Billy Joel thing of like, I'm going to make a Sting song. I'm going to make a fucking Raw Nets song. I'm going to make a, and you know what? A couple of them will be Billy Joel songs, but I'm just going to kind of pull from all these different things. I'd rather that and have a million different songs, many of which are derivative, than be like, hey, I made one song a bajillion different times. So I tip the cap to uh, the the Rodrigo camp. Yeah, but uh, so I, I think a little little bit of that is unfair because Olivia Rodrigo is still so new. Like she hasn't been around long enough to kind of like repeat her steps. Yeah, I, mean, I guess she could have. But like Taylor Swift has been around so long and like put out so much music that like, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, that that there is a formula to a lot of it. But she's covered a good amount of ground, too. Yeah, so there definitely is a formula with Taylor Swift that I don't think is there with Olivia Rodrigo. And there you could say there's... Sample size too small, bro. No, I mean, so through two albums, I'd have to go back and listen, but I'm pretty sure through two albums, Olivia Rodrigo has not used the 1564 chord progression. If you were to tell Taylor Swift to go like 20 minutes without using the one five six four chord progression i'm not kidding she might die so like there's clearly a choice in the i, I think it more comes from dan nigro because he's got a track record of making good records and like being a really gifted songwriter that it's like these other people can have that other stuff but like we're going to try to really make something I, I tweeted that it was gourmet cheap pop because it it is straightforward. It is fucking chugging eighth notes. It's the quiet verse, loud chorus thing. But still, it's not just doing one thing a million different or a million different times like Taylor does. But I, I, I don't want everything to be a shot at Taylor. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I, I've made a lot of money covering her work. <laughs> I'm going to ask you uh, to do something that I think I might continue to do depending on how well this goes in its inaugural run uh you know like how on twitter um if you see like a post about the nhl like the replies underneath will be like explain in nba terms mm -hmm. when, pe when people who don't follow hockey are like what does this mean like, yeah explain this to me in nba terms uh explain the Olivia Rodrigo thing that you just tried to explain to me in like movie terms. 
Okay. Uh, I would say the, the first thing that I, all right, Taylor Swift is Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler's great. We love Adam Sandler. Sometimes Adam Sandler's serious. And I was going to say, did you know he could be a serious actor? And he, I, you did point that out to me. Uh, but there's only so many times you can see Peter Dante get kicked in the balls before you're like, or you, you know what? There's only so many times, and I hate that I'm like, none of this is a shot at Adam Sandler. The guy's a fucking legend. But Better like, not. There's only so many times you you can do the <laughs> voice before. I don't know, like, bro. Did you see Hubie you Halloween? That glove. shit ruled. Yeah, Hubie Halloween rule. rocked, man. <laughs> he did that whole thing. And then other people can come along and do it a million different ways. I, I guess what I'm saying is, I wish. Taylor Swift were more like Adam Sandler and said, I have the silly voice, but this is how I win. There isn't enough. That exactly what she's doing? No. Well, she's winning. Yeah. I was going to say, you trying to argue that Taylor Swift losing right now? Adam Sandler's dad didn't spend a sizable chunk of money to get him his first audition. I don't think. Um, that would be the best comparison. I mean, another one could be uh, – it stinks to, to compare it to movie stuff because I'm only thinking of the people that are great because that's what we talk about with movies. Like, it would be like saying, Christopher Nolan, stop fucking covering Tom Hardy's face. If Christopher Nolan wouldn't stop covering Tom Hardy's face. Like, if you went to see Oppenheimer and it was just Tom Hardy with a fucking, like – Michael Myers mask on and you're like so this you're this guy won't stop mask doing now? this whole fucking you think about vax vaxes what's that so are you anti-mask what do you think about vaxes vaxes anti-vaccines oh is that is that a uh, 2020 is that a uh, coronavirus joke that's right baby <laughs> COVID-19 you remember right that on time brother do you remember that that's right. That's kind of the I comparison, the, I, though, of like the execution. If you're only going to do one thing a million times, then that should be what you're known for. And it doesn't mean that you're terrible. It just means that you do that one thing. And I think if other actors, to stay in this analogy, come along, like if Timothy, like when Timothy Chalamet comes out, we shouldn't be like, don't forget though, Adam Sandler was in <laughs> Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. And I think that the Timothy Chalamet is really chasing the, is really chasing the, the big daddy of it all. And you're just like, Adam yo, just Sand let it be Chalamet. Adam Sandler you know that walks rivalry? so Timothy Chalamet could run. Yeah. I don't think that Chalamet is in uh, Don't Look Up if it weren't for Adam Sandler uh, being in, I don't know, was he in Little Nicky? That's right. That's true. I think a lot of people have said that. Uh, did you know that Timothy Chalamet and Adam Sandler are friends, IRL? That doesn't surprise me. They play basketball. I bet you know, Adam Sandler you know was really wearing, likes uh, basketball. Adam Sandler. I bet Adam Sandler was wearing <laughs> like baggy basketball shorts. I think I'm more tired of the uh, like the oh Adam Sandler can really hoop discourse than I am of the. Adam Sandler can really act discourse <laughs> like at least one of those things is interesting. Who gives a fuck if Adam Sandler can play basketball? But wait, is he actually good at basketball? I truly don't know this. Yeah, I know that he likes to yeah, play basketball. Good. Yeah, he he plays all the time and like he's he's I've seen him in like in runs and he's pretty good. He's like a he's a scratch basketball player. That's right. Yeah. I wonder how good he is at golf. I bet that he's he wears be pretty good basketball he shorts Gilmore. golfing. He definitely does. Uh, do you think that if Christopher McDonald and Adam Sandler golfed against each other, Christopher McDonald would win? He seems like more. He seems like a, someone who actually golfs. Yeah, but he's like so old now. Like if they played he now, does. I think Adam Sandler would beat him. Yeah, but then Peter Dante would like, I don't know, get hit in the I nuts. Think what just happened? I think your mic just like turned on or something. Oh no, a truck just drove by. Got it. Uh, a truck yeah, drove I, by. Yeah, I think that. Uh, nice. I think that 
I, Christopher Christopher McDonald uh, likes to party quite a bit. So I think that like really maybe he maybe yeah oh yeah he uh, he's a notorious partier. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, he would he might beat Adam Sandler on the front nine, but I think on the back nine he'd be a little too loose. He'd lose some Ooh, shots. Boy, how's the golf game going? Um, I so I played two. The the not the last round, the the second to last round that I played. I felt like I played fucking awesome. It was like the best that I'd played in my life. I felt like, but I just couldn't putt, and that was really frustrating. And then the last time I played, I was like, oh, I'm playing much worse than mm. I played last round. And this sucks. It's like really demoralizing. Hey, but at least I'm like I'm putting better than uh than the last time out. I finished with the exact same fucking score. It's so bizarre to me that like you can feel like you had a fucking all the strokes count the same. So like if you hit the fucking 150 yard iron and then you miss the putt afterwards, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> like this that's why golf is fucking insane to me. It's I'm never going to be good at it. I'm I'm never going to be good at it. And there's always going to be something that ruins my fucking day. But like I'm always going to chase the high of like trying to be good at it. That's not the I mean it's good to strive for something, man. I mean it it it, it is and it's like it's it's a reason to kind of be out there and and like be competitive and and like have fun with my friends and shit like that, but like what a fucking insane sport. It doesn't make any sense. And it's so fucking hard. Mm. It It's like, it's truly insane because like, I, I think I tweeted this like a couple weeks ago. It's like 95% of every person, 95% of people that play golf are never going to be good at golf. And they're going to spend so much money on it. Either because they really want to be good at it or because they're just like really passionate about wasting time, whether that means like hanging with friends, like getting away from their family, getting a break, like relaxing, whatever. Like in every other sport and game, you feel like you have a chance to be good at it or like you're relatively good at it where like you, or you just get better over the course this. of like a month. Like if you play tennis every couple days for a month, you're pretty fucking good at tennis at the end right. of the month. Right, and, and, like, you're never trying to be, like, you're never trying to be, like, quote-unquote, a scratch tennis player. You're never trying to be, like, hanging with the pros or whatever. And and with that mindset, it's it's not as frustrating. No sport or game that you play is as frustrating as golf for some reason. Mm. Because, like... You miss like four, you miss four basketball shots in a game of pickup or whatever. And you're just like, yeah, fuck it, whatever. Some of them you miss. But then like you hit four bad shots in golf and you fucking spend the rest of the day and like pretty much all the rest of the time until the next round thinking about those shots and like wondering what the fuck went wrong <laughs> and how they tanked your entire day. That's what is insane to, about about golf to me. I can't wrap my head around it. Like, why it bothers me so much that I'm not good at it. That's why I blade, man. Even though I, I haven't rollerbladed or exercised in, like, over a week. And I feel horrible and hate my life because of it. So, I think that the whole people golf because they're passionate about wasting time. I just think, like knowing that you're going to be outside for a set amount of time goes such a fucking long way. And if that is your way of definitely being outside, we're all fucking plants, man. We need water. We need sun and we need uh, bugs on our selves. And that's, yeah, but like, but like a round of golf and a round of 18 takes like four hours. That's that's, it's such a long time. Like you have to be passionate about wasting that time. Because you you talk to anybody like, hey, you want to go play pickup basketball for four hours? You want to play ho- you want to play beer league hockey for four hours? The response would always be, "What are you fucking kidding me? No, like, you, I got shit to do." If you're but playing for four hours, golf, you need short shifts. 
Short shift. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, golf is a game of short shifts too. I like, suppose you you take a swing and then you're back in the cart. Maybe that's why you can do it for four hours. Like maybe the other sports are a little bit more taxing. But like, ask anybody, ask any adult person to do anything for four hours. They're probably gonna say no. You could watch. Uh, you could listen to the new Olivia Rodrigo album, like thirty three times in four hours. So just do that. I, I'm like now my my brain is attached to like, how many things would I commit to, for four hours, like knowing that they're gonna last four hours. There are things that I've done for four hours, that, you know, I I didn't have a problem with, but I didn't sign up for doing them for four hours. Uh. I don't know. Like, like, I love the movies. Love yeah. movies. You told me I had to watch a four-hour movie. No, wouldn't do it. Yeah, but I'll do things for four hours. Like I, that's what I'm saying. Like if I'll I'm do like working on something. I will gladly lose four hours, and it'll it feels so good. Correct, but that's what I'm saying. Like you didn't if if you if you had to sign a piece of paper that says I'm going to do this for the next four hours, I don't think you'd sign it. Yeah. It just kind of happens, and you lose that time. It does blow the, my the, mind that radio hosts do four-hour shows, like every day. It's so long. Must suck. Four hours is so long. Yeah, like a four-hour drive is too long of a drive, and I like driving. Too long. No, uh, four-hour drive is four-hour drive is nice. No, that's too long. Anything longer than three hours, like four hours, is doable, but it's not nice. After three hours, you're like, all right, well, how much time we got left? Four, I think that four hours is better than like two and a half hours. Uh, well, you can settle in a little bit more. Yeah. Can, like blow through more than two and a half episodes of a podcast, which is nice. Uh, if you're watching, listen to like serial or something. Or uh, listen to fucking uh, the guts, guts 300 um, times. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would like literally sign up for for four hours is golf and video games. That's it. Video I guess watching too. hockey too. For sure. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, watch a first round uh playoff game at the NHL. Those are all four yeah. hours. So I yeah, so I guess I guess so, like select sports. Like NFL Sundays for sure. I, I watched fucking straight up every single football game yeah not every single football game but like I, I i sat through and god i missed that what a what a feeling to just feel like an absolute piece of shit and know that you're not going to get up all day on a sunday and you don't have to feel bad about it yeah i gotta figure out what i'm doing in the four o'clock uh hour this week or the four o'clock slot because chargers are at 1 p.m patriots are at 8 20 gotta see who i give a shit about in that uh, 425 window. Did you get Sunday ticket? Window. Oh, yeah. I got Sunday ticket. How else am I going to watch those fucking jamokes? Mr. There's... Moneybags over here. It's not expensive. Or it's, it's worth expensive. it. It's worth it. 200 if you... bucks. Uh, it's more than that. Jesus. It's too expensive. Really? If Red zone, brother. But if you but like you care about the Chargers, if you so want to watch, it. yeah, if, if you have a team that you want to watch, just it's worth the peace of mind to are you going to like. So the thing about football, though, is like most of the games that I want to watch are on TV anyway. A lot. Yeah, a and lot like, of them are. And I'll see the other ones via red zones like here and there. So, like, I don't really feel like I'm missing anything. I It's. It's not appealing to me to just be like, okay, four o'clock hour, I'm going to watch one of these games in full because chances are the one that I'm going to pick is already on TV. Oh, no. So what I'll do for the 425 is I'll put on whichever game I most want to watch, whether that is available locally or on a Sunday ticket, and then I'll do Red Zone on the other TV. So it's still, yeah, it's still but... a dub. Yeah, but match. like like your value in in Sunday ticket is like 95% you get to watch every Chargers game. Knowing that I can see all the Chargers games. And that's what I mean is that I don't think that Sunday ticket has a lot of value outside of people who are just trying to watch their favorite team out of market. I was going to say you could get it as like a Bijan tracker, but I'm but like Red Zone is a Bijan tracker. Except that's what I'm saying. Like if I need to pop into uh like a Falcons game, 
Red Zone will give that to me when I need it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, done. <laughs> That's it. That's why. Why are you still here? Yeah. Go.